You're listening to the Racing Virginia Podcast. Now, here are your hosts. And welcome to episode number 79. Right? One before 80. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's 70. Yeah, it is 79. It is 79. I'm Dave C. I'm Brandon Brown, not the NASCAR driver. <laughs> Which he had a little bit of a tough weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Had a, but he's still, he's still in the championship standings. Yep. He is, uh, he's 12th right now, and he is, uh, he's got a good gap. 23 over, points. Yep. He's got a good gap. But over. he had 58. I know. <laughs> well, he was, hell, he was running top 15, and he has shown that he could yeah. run top 15 on those road courses. Uh, they were racing at the Daytona road course. Well, this and past and by the way, I, I saw a lot <laughs> of, a, a lot of chatter on social media that said, the Daytona Road Course should stay on the schedule. For that that is a uh, that, that it is. was that they, it was a very exciting race. Oh my gosh! It for was, all of them. Yep. Arca, it, Xfinity, and Cup. Arca was good. Uh, Michael Self and Ty Gibbs had a great battle for the lead at the end of the Arca race. Um, they yeah. did. It was, yeah, it was. It was. Good. Michael Self coming out with a win. But Brandon was Brandon Brown, not me, was running really well at the Daytona Road Course, and uh, they had a part failure yeah. um, on his car, so relegated him to a uh, – finished in the 30s, I think. So, yeah. But he's still uh, still in the playoff hunt. Um, great battle for the lead. Uh, teammates Sheldon Creed and Brett Moffitt uh, had a yeah. nice battle in the truck race. And then uh, Denny Hamlin, our boy, Denny yeah. Hamlin, the future Hall of Famer, Nearly, uh, nearly gave uh, Chase Elliott a run for his money there at the end of the race on a late, late caution in the Cup race. Yeah, I, it, and by the way, I, I put that in your ball. I put that in your court now. Uh huh. All right. I just, yeah. I'm just saying. Uh huh. Just put it. You know, we're we're trying. By the way, folks, we're, if anybody out there that listens to this is like family to Denny Hamlin or something, um, we're trying to get him for the yeah. for the show. That way you can geek out really bad. You're, you're acting like I'm this huge Denny Han- like I'm the biggest Denny Hamlin fan on the planet. I just think he's a Hall of Famer, you know? You he can, is. Yeah. yeah. And, he's, anyway. and he's having a really good yeah. season. So some great uh, great NASCAR, uh, NASCAR and ARCA uh, road course racing this, uh, this past weekend. Um, Going to lead into some... Uh, more really good man i'll, I'll tell you we got a we got a really good show we want we're going to kind of prep on i know that the cars tour is at franklin county yep uh this this coming weekend and i was hoping to have somebody for that but i'm, I'm we're going to save him for another show and hopefully we'll get a hold of him shortly but all good but then we you know we we, to, we to, almost totally forgot that virginia international raceway vir which VIR. is one of, which is one of the top six road courses in the country yeah is going to be having the virginia is for racing lovers grand prix this coming this coming weekend. weekend yeah friday saturday sunday and with no fans no f- <laughs> un- unfortunately because i mean one of yeah. the uh, one of the most beautiful facilities yes. in the state in the country you know it is a very challenging course i'm and folks we have a i had no idea about this either okay mm-hmm. but we have two Really, I, I mean, they are at the top of their game. Road course racers. We're going to have James Clay. He's out of Blacksburg. Mm-hmm. Uh, he drives in the uh, GS class, I believe it is, and uh, he's the with Michelin Team Pilot yeah. Challenge Series, as it's formerly known. Yeah, and it, and he's with Team Beamer. Yep. The Bimmers. Bimmers. The Bimmer BM, World. He, BMWs. Yeah, he owns a he owns a company we'll, called we'll, Bimmer World. We'll ask him exactly the how to how to properly say that. Yeah. And one of the top road course racers in the world. Uh, talking world. World. Okay. In the world, the world racing is a big place. Racing for Team Chevrolet in the Corvette C8. Oh my God. I just give I'd give a right arm maybe to be able to drive just drive it a little drive bit. Drive it, take it out of VR. Yeah, just just take it out of. Maybe I'd, you can sneak in this uh, <sighs> upcoming weekend and but, see if you can take it for a spin. But that's going to be Tommy Milner. He's he's out of Ashton, Virginia. I had no idea we had such phenomenal road course racers here in the state. Yeah, man. Look, the more we do this show, the more I find that we are really blessed with talent here in the state. Oh. A diverse set of talent too. Also, I want to do. I'm going to kind of throw this out to, uh, to everybody. Okay. okay. We have a Twitter page. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think we ought to start taking uh, uh, an Ask uh, Racing Virginia podcast questions. Do a hashtag Ask RVP. Okay. Tag that in a Twitter tweet or a tweet, mm-hmm. not a Twitter tweet, but a tweet. 
A Twitter, a Twitter tweet. And then we can pick it's like some saying APM machine. Yeah, we can pick some of the um, the questions, and hopefully answer them correctly. That would be uh, that would be you know ideal if we could <laughs> answer them correctly. We 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 could just uh, we could just do like a wrong answers only. You ever see those? Like who's this driver? Wrong answers only. We'll do that. Well, I, we might as well get this thing started and go straight to the phone lines and uh, talk to uh, uh, one of Virginia's and the and the country's uh, top uh, road course racers. He's going to be at VIR this weekend for the uh, Virginia's for Lovers. Racing Lovers Grand Prix. He is from Blacksburg, Virginia. Had no idea. He is James Clay. How you doing, James? Hey, great. Good morning. Good morning. First of all, uh, thank you for taking some time out to visit with us here on the Racing Virginia podcast. We like to promote everything racing in the state of Virginia, drivers and, uh, and of course, racetracks and events. And a big one at VIR, which is not too far from you. No. I would imagine that would be called your home track. In fact, you've already run there this year already. We got a little thing going here, okay? Is it Beamer World or Bimmer World? <laughs> it's Bimmer World. There Bimmer we World. go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because um, you know, Brandon over here was saying that, you know, BMWs are called Bimmers. Yeah. I thought they were called Beamers. Well, I, what I well, said. Well, BMW. There, let, BMW let bikes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, BMW bikes are Beamers. So, yeah, if we were racing motorcycles, we would be Beamer World. But ah. We are racing cars. Yeah, see? First of all, uh, you know, for us, I personally didn't. I mean, I watch the, the, the IMSA stuff and am thrilled with some of uh, with the racing that happens in these divisions but i i never knew that we had such qualified drivers and great drivers road course drivers in the state of virginia talk a little about um how you got into this and and uh, and how you got to where you are now okay um so grew up in virginia uh in Pulaski county and just uh I guess, I guess around the tail end of college, um, but it realized I, I liked, uh, I like cars. I like driving, driving fast cars. And, uh, of course, you know, road courses are accessible and you can do that in the smart and safe way by taking it, taking a car and putting it on a road course. And so I did that and learned a little bit about it. And man, it's, it was just a, a ton of fun and uh, you know, just a, a really great time, great challenge. And so, uh, let's see, that was, uh, that was mid late nineties. And so I've, uh, you know, for a long time <laughs> figured out how to, how to do more of that and, uh, you know, do it in a highly competitive manner. And here we are today. That's uh, that's crazy because um, normally you know we talk to a lot of drivers who start their careers really young, like yeah, five years old. Five yeah. years old. So, um, what uh, what kind of transpired to make you want to jump into this? Say you know later than a lot of uh, a lot of drivers. You know, it's it's one of those things that I just really didn't know about. Um, you know, at an earlier age, and so granted, uh, it, and I think that's um, especially important for 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 certain types of racing like uh, formula cars or uh, you know, a lot of these dirt cars and NASCAR and so forth. Um, but luckily uh, for me, road course racing isn't, uh, doesn't necessarily have to, to go that route. And so I was able to start a, a little bit later. Um, but really just, you know, I, I started when I found out about it because it's um, you know, road course racing is a you know, pretty well-kept secret a lot of the time. It's certainly gotten a lot more exposure in the last, uh, you know, decade or so. But uh, just, just really didn't know that there was anything like that out there uh, when I was a kid, when I was growing up. So, um, yeah. Uh, road course racing is very competitive. The manufacturers very competitive against each other. How do you get tied in with BMW? Talk about how you that relationship came about. So we've we've been I've been uh, with BMW since since the start, and so that that means a you know really different things um, back then. I you know with BMW means that um, when I when I was looking at a at a car to take on a road course and something that was uh, you know had the had the handling characteristics to make it suitable for a road course. Um, and was reasonably 
cost effective and so forth. It, a BMW was a pretty solid answer. Um, so I, I built a business around it. Um, Denver World, our, our, you know, Denver World Racing is our race team. Denver World is our parts uh, company, and we are uh, the nation's leading supplier of BMW performance and aftermarket parts. So, um, but we weren't back then. We were just we were just <laughs> trying to. Uh, figure it out. Try to try to make a buck. Try to you know, try to stay on the racetrack. And so, you know, I kind of grew that that business. And then, um, you know, I never really never really thought that um, we'd get where we are today with it. But at some point, BMW um, took note, and um, you know, the relationship evolved. And um, now, you know, we, we have a. a really solid working relationship with them for the fans out there for the listeners uh, talk about i mean you you have um multiple teams with bimmer world racing and you have it looks like multiple the, the cars are a little bit different and you race in different divisions talk about the the difference and where the pecking order is for the divisions that you are running currently Okay, so um the, the upcoming race this weekend uh at bir is with IMSA. Uh, IMSA is the the road racing arm of NASCAR, and it, you know I view that as uh, you know kind of our pinnacle. Um, it's it's the most competitive. Um, it's the it's the you know kind of the highest professional sports car racing uh, organization in the U.S. Um, we also run in SRO, which is a European based or, or I guess a European based global series. Um, and we have, uh, SRO America, um, which is our American arm of that. Uh, and we have an American series. Of course, you can, you can also stick a car in a container and run, uh, a global series as well. Um, so, so we do that. Uh, we, we have multiple, multiple cars in both of those, um, and then, of course, there's there's different classes of cars. Um, this coming weekend at BIR, we're gonna we're gonna have our IMSA uh, Michelin Pilot Cup Challenge, which is my primary series. Um, and we have the BMW M4 GT4 cars um, in the GS class of, of that. Um, but that's a that's a lot of letters, lots of a lot of words. <laughs> but basically, that means we're taking <laughs> we're taking production cars um, modified and built by the manufacturers. Um, purpose-built road race cars, um, and we're racing them with similar road race cars. So uh, Ford Mustangs, uh, Chevy Camaros, Aston Martins, uh, Porsche Caymans. Um, but we have some McLaren, some some kind of other interesting equipment out there. Um, but it's uh, it's sports car racing, and in my opinion, sports car racing is finest. For the fans who might have only gotten a taste of uh, of sports car racing through, say the the most recent, say um, twenty four hours of Daytona broadcasts, um, is this series what you're racing this weekend at, at VRER so, the the same exact format? Uh, similar. Uh, it's the same exact series, different format. So, so that weekend um, is a you know twenty four hour race for um, for the WeatherTech series, uh, which is the other series that we run with uh, the Michelin Pilot Challenge series is a four hour race at Daytona. So, those races those those are the longer races of the year. Uh, we start off the race the the season with the long races. Um, this weekend, I think we're two forty five two hours forty five minutes for. The Weather Tech Series in two hours, uh, which is our standard format for the Michelin Series. Now, you mentioned Daytona, um, and of course, we're coming right off of the Daytona Road Course race in Cup this weekend. And so, you know, I, I think uh, and, and certainly appreciate NASCAR embracing road racing. Um, but now we're starting to to see road racing, um, road racing on simulated uh, road course tracks. Um, kind of in all classes of racing. So I think that's a, it's a pretty cool time. Did you watch uh, most or all of the racing this, uh, this weekend with the Cup Xfinity trucks and ARCA? And if so, what did, what did you think about the show that those guys uh, put on for the first time on that road course? I watched uh, a fair amount of it. I was fairly busy this weekend, but I, I watched what I could. And, um, you know, I, I thought it was awesome. Um, you know, those guys did a great job. I know it's, I know it's not necessarily um, their standard. Um, and it's, it's interesting because a lot of the, 
a lot of the guys that are that were finishing up front or running up front in those classes uh, are guys that have run with us on a regular basis. Guys that want to want to figure out how to how to do this road course thing. Um, you know, as the uh, let's see what the the Bush series. Um, the, those cars were Austin Cindric, um is a is a normal driver in our series at almost every weekend. So, you know, it's kind of cool to see him out there doing well uh, in his race. So, How nice is it to really have a race right, I'm not going to say right down the street, but it's still still closer than just about any place else you go. Yeah, the VIR is really special. Um, you know, it's not only is it close and that makes it easy for us, and that's kind of nice, but it just feels like home. Um, the VIR is just, set in in the beautiful rolling hills of, of right outside of Danville Virginia um, it's it's you know one of the top road course races in the in the US which is which is pretty pretty awesome to have that you know tucked away in your backyard it's a nice little gym um, but it's you know it just kind of uh, the, the the buildings the facility the, the whole thing is just beautifully done and you know just feels like home so that's I think mean, that's the that's the best part of it is, you know, it really is kind of a homecoming in the middle of the race season for us. From all indication on our side, both of us here at the Race in Virginia podcast, you know, uh, Brandon works at Richmond Raceway or NASCAR, uh, mm-hmm. and and I work for a dirt track in Virginia. So we don't get to see as much of the road course stuff, but we understand that VIR is a, a very technical course and a little difficult, as some people say. I mean, it's challenging. Yeah, there's the the road courses absolutely range from you know pretty simple layout. I would I would call this um, this Daytona uh, road course um, this past weekend. That's that's uh, it's challenging. It's it's certainly important uh, as you get on those those long fast straights or on the oval. Um, but it's it's not a lot of turns um, and not a lot of link turns uh, versus VIR. Um, Seventeen turns over three point two miles, and many of those turns are linked together so if you you know if you screw up the first the first in the series then then you're you know you're losing time all the way through the sector so um it's it really is challenging tremendous amounts of elevation uh, which is you know also makes it a lot of fun a couple of turns that you really just kind of have to uh, squint your eyes a little bit and think you can make it and you know that's that's always cool to, to have a have turns like that that are just right on the edge of the car I hear a lot about road course racing, the elevation part of it. You know, they always, what one might say, have 60 feet of elevation. Uh, VIR has 130 feet of elevation. Is that one of the higher amounts uh, out there? I know uh, Road America is pretty, I think it's got a, a pretty high. Yeah, you know, Watkins Glen has a fair amount of elevation, especially in the long course that we run. Um, but that's that's a fairly high amount. And, you know, it's we don't just have one uphill and one downhill um, this, you know, the, the track kind of rolls through the through the hills, so we have multiple up and downhill sections. Um, you know, just like just like bumps and, and angle of an oval and so forth, really, you know, are a factor as you're driving and choosing a line. Um, you know, how you take these turns, what the what, what the overhead geometry would look like, uh, is is significantly affected uh, by that elevation as, as you're you're essentially gaining and losing vertical G's or load on the tire. So. It's a, you know, it's a three-dimensional puzzle, and it's it's one that makes it a lot of fun. In NASCAR and circle track racing, there's a lot of uh, rivalries. Uh, do you do you see that as much in road course racing? It, it's, uh, I would say there there are certainly some of those. Um, more uh, more falls between teams, maybe teams and drivers specifically versus manufacturers. I think. Uh, I think it's a, a fairly collaborative thing to some degree because we all recognize that we're just trying to make an awesome show and, and grow this whole road course racing thing. Um, but certainly, you know, when we're when we're on track, it's uh, you know you you can see the different personalities and the and the agreements or disagreements between the drivers. So. Do you uh, do you see uh, in uh, in uh, road course racing the the fan affinity falls more towards the manufacturer or or do you see more of a say like with circle track or, or something like that the the driver and team affinity more i i think it's a little bit more the manufacturer and i think that's because a lot of uh, a lot of the fans in road course racing get into road course racing because they you can look at the vehicles and say that's my car 
Yeah. Um, these are these are production cars um, that the factory has pulled off the line to change, install roll cage, safety gear, um, some lightweight panels, some performance parts, and so forth. But they really are um, the cars that you can pick up at the dealership and drive on the street. And so I think that connection between the actual equipment that's sitting in your garage and the thing you're seeing go around the racetrack is what brings in fans and endears them to a, to a certain mark. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of fans, obviously this this weekend they will be racing without fans at VAR, unfortunately, um, especially since it's one of the, the most fan friendly, beautiful um, circuits on you know in the world. Um, what is it like from you guys, um, you know, not racing there with with all of the crowds and and things due to the pandemic? You know, it's uh, I didn't know how I would feel about that um, when we first started, and you know, it's it's so it's so great to get back to racing, and I really appreciate the fact that I can be um, on a on a racetrack in a car, going fast, doing what I love doing. But the fans are such such an important part of it, and I really miss that. And it's you know. It's, Sadly, it's just not really the same without it. Not to say it won't be fun. Not to say we won't put on a great show. Certainly, it's it's going to be good racing. But to miss the, you know to miss those people that those interactions, it's just such a such an enjoyable part of the whole activity. So you know it's a it's certainly a little sad. But you know looking forward, we'll we'll get through this thing and we'll have fans back at the track soon. And it's definitely frustrating for for us as individuals that work in the business with the COVID-19. I know talking to the folks at VIR, it's it's very frustrating to them because this particular mm-hmm. event is well attended. I mean, a lot of the races for the WeatherTech and the GT, uh, the Michelin GT Challenge, a lot of these places you go, you're seeing 20, 30,000 people. Absolutely. And, and a couple of the tracks, even more than that. So it's a uh, it's it's important. It's certainly important for for the uh, for the track and the economy. Um, and so to to miss out on all those fans, you know, it's it's not just seeing the smiling faces. It's also, um, it, you know, it's what makes all the events work. So I think everybody's everybody's made some compromises this year to to just put on events and continue on as normal as we can. And you know, certainly I appreciate uh, the folks at VIR who have worked hard to put this this event together. And, you know, it'll be a first class event, uh, even though we don't have fans. And, and of course, the facility will be just absolutely perfect as it always is. But, um, you know, thanks. Thanks for them for putting it together. And like I said, we'll get back to fans soon. Uh, you'll be able to watch the watch the races on Track Pass or NBC Sports Gold or NBCSN for the uh, for the, you know, the feature show on Sunday for the fans that might be tuning in or just coming across the race on TV. And, you know, say if you flipped on the channel and you uh, are just tuning into that race, tell the fans what they can, you know, what they should look for and uh, who they should root for. <laughs> well, um, so, so we have two, two large races this weekend. The WeatherTech race is on Saturday at, I believe, 2.45 in the afternoon, something like that. Um, that is, uh, and, and as a GT challenge, it is, it is all the, the GT cars. So we have uh, Corvette, BMW, Porsche um, running the factory stuff, and then the GTD class um, with a, a wider range of cars. So all all this endurance racing is multi class. There will be a couple of couple of uh, classes on the on the track at the same time. So that's that's a factor to keep in mind. Um, same with our um, our Michelin race on Sunday. Uh, we'll have our GS class cars, which which we run, and we'll we'll also have TCR cars, which are uh, smaller front wheel drive um, hatchbacks. And so you'll you'll a little bit more see the visual difference in those cars. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, it's two hours, 45 minutes, minutes on Saturday, two hours on Sunday. Um, all these races are multi driver races. So you'll see pit stops for tires and fuel, but you'll also see driver changes at some point, um, in the middle of the race. And, um, yeah, we're uh, <laughs> who should you root for? The Vim World <laughs> cars. We we would we would certainly appreciate that uh, running the uh, running the eighty two, and then also our eighty car um, in in uh, Sunday's race is the racing to end Alzheimer's car. Um, so we're we're super proud of that that effort, and 
uh, having those guys on board with us. 10-4, we'll be rooting for Oh, them. yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you talked about multiple classes on uh, during the race running together. How challenging is that, um, you know, having to navigate – other divisions while you're racing against your own division it's uh so so it's interesting um the way these are these are set up so the the performance of the cars is somewhat dictated by the the cars themselves but they they're in a nice little window um but then the way the series um adjusts the performance of the cars to to make everybody even uh and and then to make the multi-class racing work out pretty well so um because our cars are more powerful, larger, larger tires, um, but a little heavier. We get through the corners about the same speed as the TCR class, which are the other cars we're racing at the same time. So it's, um, you know, everybody coexists fairly well. We go through the corners at about the same speed. There's more passing on the straights where the, where the larger, powerful cars can just kind of get around. Now there's there's certainly um, a challenge, and VIR is is definitely one of those places where you do have these linked turns, uh, four or five turns all together, and you you know of course when you're when you're in the heat of battle with another car uh, coming up on on out of class traffic, uh, you, you don't want to wait four or five turns to to have that sorted out. You want to you want to get around. You want to use that other car's pick and 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 pull back the car you're that that, that you're fighting. So. Um, it adds a dynamic, um, and, and once you're, you know, you'll, you'll see as a spectator, um, the, the, the windshield banners are different, um, and that's the best way to identify the different classes. And so you can see, um, when it's, when it's a racing class or when that lap traffic or that, or that out of class traffic, um, is being used, um, kind of as a, as a piece of the chess match in the, in the fight between cars in class. I know getting a win at VIR at your home track would be great, but is there is there an event or a race that is on your bucket list that is a must win for you? Ah, oh, man. I uh, Unfortunately, there's a couple things I've given up this year as, as racing. Um, it was, of course, delayed and then, uh, and then has just gotten crazy. Um, as you mentioned, as always, VIR is special to me, and, and uh, a win there is is always the uh, you know on on my bucket list. We, you know, even even once we do it, we want to do it again. Um, unfortunately, I've got a I had to push back Pike's Peak. We have a we have a car um, that's that we've been building for three years to run the Pike's Peak International Hill Climb, um, which is now a conflict as, as events have changed with our racing schedule, and so that's that's certainly one we need to knock out. And then um, all our all our international travel is canceled this year. So um, I typically run the Nurburgring 24 hour uh, over in Germany, and um, unfortunately, I can't get there this year. So um, absolutely, winning that thing would just be a huge achievement, and, and certainly one of my goals. What do you see as the difference when you race in Europe and when you race in the states? What differences are there? So it, it's. Uh, the car, you know, the cars are, are, are of course very similar to what I have over here. The the formats are very similar. It's endurance racing, it's multi class, all of that. Um, the racing style, the driving style is slightly different. Um, and you know, I like um, I like our American style of racing a little bit better. Um, I think it's um, I think there's a little bit more um, fair chance given, a little bit more room. Um, and then, you know, oddly on the other side of that, um, you know, I, I think that, um, it's, it's maybe a little bit harder racing as well. Um, and if you're, you know, there is, there is certainly, um, maybe more in, not, not intentional rubbing because we're not necessarily looking to bang on each other. Um, but we'll, we'll certainly, uh, we'll certainly coexist stand ground and and rub tires and so forth um you know as as we're trying to work by each other and, and race each other so um yeah I, I just think there's overall maybe a little bit more respect in the in the u.s racing for for each other than than i see in europe yeah like australia the supercars you know the is it supercar yeah australia v8 supercars v8 supercar, v8 supercar. V8 supercar. those guys want to kill each other and i don't you know i'm <laughs> i'm i'm looking at okay is there there's not much etiquette over there. There's a little bit more etiquette and a give and take, uh, it seems, over here in the States. I, I agree with that 100%. Uh, I mean, I, and the, worst, the thing is, I love this. And uh, 
you know, like Formula Formula One is it's all. I mean, yes, the drivers are the the main attraction, but it uh, it almost seems like the manufacturers are the main attraction. You know, certain drivers want to get in certain manufacturers for road course racing. How uh, competitive are the manufacturers with each other? Um, well, uh, unlike Formula One, who has a formula that you build to each manufacturer does their best and the formula is kind of set for the year. Um, when we, when we talk about road course racing, um, it's, it's all affected by balance of performance, which is what the series, um, kind of dictates the, the spec of the car that you bring. So they, they adjust ride heights, which of course affects the aerodynamics of the car. They adjust weight of the car. Um, boost pressure for our, for the turbo cars, restrictor size for the naturally aspirated cars, RPM limits, and so forth. So they they really can adjust um, how the cars stop, how the cars handle, what the tire degradation is, what the power of the cars is. is. So they can really bring a lot of cars all together to race very similarly. So I would say that there's not really um, – a, a long running manufacturer benefit. Certainly as, as the BOP or balance of performance is, is adjusted per race. Maybe it's not always perfect for, for the, for a given car. Um, but there's an ebb and flow and you know, if it's, if it's off a little bit this weekend, if one way it'll be maybe off a little bit the, the next weekend, the other way. So it really is good, close racing and nobody holds just an overall advantage. Do you take some pride in that NASCAR fans are now calling for more road course racing? Does it give you guys a sense of pride that they want they want to do what you guys are doing? I, I think that's awesome, and to see those you know, especially those young cup drivers coming through our series to to learn the ropes. The you know the Ford guys um, put a bunch of their drivers in a, in our series to to get them up to speed. You know, it's it's something that we've worked so hard for so many years to. To really develop and it's just you know it's a it's a passion it's something i love doing and want to share with other people and then suddenly nascar has opened that huge door um and and brought uh you know said hey this is what this is and you know fans have responded and and really enjoy it and yeah it's it's fantastic to see the explosion of it because we we also see then the benefit in our series as well and the you know the fans that that kind of carry over and they, you know, we, we love what they did in Cup. Um, now let's see the, the sports cars do it. Where do you kind of rank VIR amongst the other tracks that you race on as far as raceability, difficulty, those kind of things? It's, um, it's, it's probably not the most technical, um, but it's extremely technical. Um, and, and when I say not the most technical um, – I'm thinking maybe it's, uh, there's a couple of tracks out in California that are, um, the, the asphalt is it itself is a real challenge in the tire degradation. Um, so, you know, in that, in that case, um, technical in just a, not even a, a fun way. Nobody, nobody likes, um, the, you know, the tire deg and, and trying to keep a car under you that's just falling apart. So I, I think it's a very fun technical challenge. Um, I, like I said, I think the, I think the, the hospitality and just the, the, the beauty of the track is is just absolutely at the top. Um, certainly, it's it's my home track, uh, and that has to play a factor. But it's it's the track that I look forward to every year, and and the my favorite track on the circuit. Well, we can't thank you enough for schooling us. Oh yeah, <laughs> on road, you know road road course racing. I mean, it, that's the one thing that we want to try to do is educate the listeners, the fans out there and uh, highlight the, the amount of phenomenal racing and phenomenal drivers we hear, have here in the state of Virginia. That's what the Race in Virginia podcast is all about. And to have some of the best road course racers in the world in our own backyard is just it, – it, it's a sense of pride. I don't know. I, I'm feeling pretty cool now. I'm like, yeah. uh, you know. I feel smarter <laughs> yeah. for having had this conversation. <laughs> that, for sure. That is about right. Uh, but we can't thank you enough. I know you're busy and uh, getting ready for this weekend, also running your business for, for – uh, uh, but uh, thank you so much for taking the time out to visit with us. And we hope to uh, – uh, Either meet you in person here shortly or uh, talk to you again. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks thanks for the time today. And 
Um, watch us this weekend. Looking forward to racing at uh, Virginia International Raceway. Thanks, James. Thanks, guys. That is uh, James Clay. He'll be driving the number 82 Optima BMW. Yeah, James. I am. A, I feel a little bit smarter. Professor I do. Professor James yeah. Clay, because uh, we we just went to school. I know I just went to school on a lot of a lot of different things. Um, I was one of those uh, one of those people who started watching road course racing. One because I went to Road America and saw yeah. saw the sports cars up there, but the the amount of focus that they put on the the Rolex 24 at Daytona and highlighting that and and, and intertwining the NASCAR coverage with that. And really showcasing that got me interested. Because I mean, it's it's almost the Rolex twenty four at Daytona is almost like the the opening of racing season. Yeah, I mean yeah. that's what that's what I p- picture yeah. it as. And and the way that they've tried to educate people on on that race bleeds over into being educated into the you know the rest of the IMSA series of WeatherTech and uh, um, really. The more the more educated you are on something, yeah. the more likely you are Absolutely. to enjoy it. So if you start to you know recognize the cars and the names and, yeah. and the strategy behind it, and, you're and more likely I mean, to tune I in. mean, for for uh, casual fans in the state of Virginia now, sure. you know, uh, they find out, hey, we do have some drivers from Virginia. Yeah, and and, and you know, to be able to pull for. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing is, if you want to follow uh, James Clay and his. Uh, Bimmer World uh, Racing Team, go to uh, BimmerWorldRacing.com or on social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Bimmer World. Perfect. Give him a little business. Now, yeah. It doesn't sound like he needs like any help, though, on that. No, nah, he's, he's, he's doing the, well for himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the largest uh, after BMW aftermarket company and yeah. parts company in the world. That's pretty. He's, that's, he's all right. Again, <laughs> never knew it, he never knew it was in Blacksburg. Yeah, exactly. you know, I'm just all I thought was in Blacksburg was Virginia Tech. And and you, coming from West Virginia University, like I do, I can't say that I <laughs> care much for Virginia Tech or anything. Uh, but uh, it, you know, it, there's a lot going Sorry, on this. There, yeah, there's a lot going on this weekend. It really is, uh, you know. With and the thing is, it's almost like all of it is in the western part of the state. All the special yeah. events. I mean, you got Franklin County with the the Cars Tour event this weekend. Yep, really and, cool to have that announced. Yeah. There, and if you are going, uh, by the way, I mean, I'm being told that is going to be a phenomenal race. 22 degree banking on that on that track and. Uh, it's kind of an equalizer. I don't think they've been there before. Uh, they may have been, but I, uh, from what I've Not seen, the Cars Tour at least. Yeah, I don't think the Cars Tour has been there. Yeah. So uh, this is this is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks like the Cars Tour is staying in the state of Virginia because North Carolina really is not allowing anybody to race. Uh, at least Virginia has for the at least the short tracks they can have up to a thousand mm-hmm. participants slash spectators. And Which is difficult because I talked to Vaughn Crittenden uh, this past week, had lunch with him, and he goes, it's very difficult because you got to kind of gauge, okay, how many tickets can I sell to the fans? And it's all online. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all hands-free. And because we've got to worry about how many cars we're getting, drivers, teammates, you know, I mean, uh, tr- uh, crew sure. members. So it's it's a very, it, you know, it's kind of like going to be a, a math whiz or something to figure it all out. So. I'm I'm definitely not that. <laughs> I did well in statistics, but never any other maths. Uh, we do want to remind everybody that um, Richmond Raceway will be having the trucks back. Want to remind everybody, the trucks are going to be back. I know we haven't decided on whether there are fans or whatever yet, but uh, the, at least we got the truck race back. Yeah, we, the trucks here at Richmond Raceway we, have always produced a great race. So we. Uh, that is one of the most exciting things was we had them back and then the pandemic happened and right. then they went away yep. and now they're back for their traditional fall date on a Thursday night. And I went back and I watched um, literally every lap of every previous truck race uh, last week because I was doing writing a piece for our um, a virtual program that we're going to have online for Richmond Raceway. And I, I remembered the trucks to be really fun at Richmond, but I didn't remember them to be that fun, man. They were wrecks and just 
the battles, yeah. like the clean, like aside from the wrecks, the clean battles for the lead that they had in, the, in those races were phenomenal. And I cannot wait to watch them uh, at Richmond here coming up. Look, f- four races in a matter of three days. Yes, sir. It's going to be. Uh, I don't think gonna, that's going to be. Happened. All of them are going to be playoff races. No, sir. No, no, no. no going sir. into the playoffs. So, so uh, the the way that they had to rework the schedule with the double headers and this and that and the other. Um, the trucks race will be the cutoff race. Cut off. Okay. For there we go. The, for the the round of ten, it was eight this last year. It's now the round of ten in the trucks playoffs, and the Xfinity Series races will be. Um, to ahead of the last cutoff race, which will be at Bristol. So they will they won't be cutoff races, but the Cup Series race, the Federated Auto Parts 400, will be the second race in the NASCAR playoffs and the second in the um, the first round. A lot to keep up with. <laughs> but 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 again, for for those fans here in the state of Virginia, I mean we have I mean Martinsville is in the playoffs. Yeah, the cutoff, the, the cutoff race for the for, championship for the championship. So, and God, that is going to be amazing it's because be wild. Martinsville is a you know kind of a you know you it's a juggle thing. You you never know who's going to win there because there's a lot of beating and banging. There's a lot of rubbing. Sometimes the the winner there is kind of a surprise. Yep. It has been in the past, and they're going to have trucks. Xfinity and Cup. Cup. Three days in a row, all three cutoff races to see who goes to the championship four. And, How cool is that? And we might as well talk about Darlington. Right? Oh, yeah. So, you, Darlington, <laughs> the first, the NASCAR, the official NASCAR throwback weekend. They've already, yeah, I was going to say throwback weekend, yeah. Yep. Um, but now, along with it being the uh, – um, the throwback weekend it's the first race in the playoffs Playoffs. so you're gonna see a lot of things probably that you haven't seen all year with strategy and 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 drivers doing different things especially the ones that are lower in the in the i don't know i've I've seen yeah but the throwback stuff i love oh my gosh and 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 i'm and the wood brothers okay their, that paint scheme that they oh lord oh that chrome red Mm -hmm. oh Beautiful, isn't it? it it's, a, it's a throwback to was it? Tiny Lund's, Tiny Lund's car. Uh, Daytona 500 yeah. winning car, I believe but it's, it was. But it's a chrome uh-huh. red. Yep. Or mar- I don't know what color it is because it ain't red red. It's like maroon red. Mar- yeah. Well, well, yeah. Oh. It's gorgeous. I mean, and all you got to do is go to Race in Virginia web, uh, Facebook page. We put a uh, You put a picture of it up, and, man, it is beautiful. Uh, Matt, a- oh, God, I could only – oh. You know we got to get Matt, Matt on. Yeah, well he's we've he's, had him on before. Have oh, this was pre previously yeah. Yeah. to me, but but he's you know right now as a, as it sits right now it's going to Deben- take De Benedetto De Benedetto De Benedetto. Um, it's going to take uh, a couple really really poor runs on their part to miss the playoffs. Yeah. He is he is solidly in right now. It's going to take a couple of surprise winners or a couple of uh, really poor run, and they've been running really well this year. I've been I really have been waiting for him to get in victory lane with the with the with the wood brothers car oh really he's been close yeah he's been close um, he's been running a lot of top tens a lot of top fives i mean he's he he is the 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 you know a good he is one of the better ones that i think that is not one yet oh yeah for sure absolutely um and one of the probably the the driver that that hasn't won yet that you root for the most. Yeah. You know, his story. And, and he's how, so nice. Yeah. God, oh, he's so nice. nice. Yeah. Oh, he, he, a phenomenal we, interview. We had a, we had him here last year, and I, I got to yeah. pet a seal with him at the at <laughs> Virginia <laughs> Beach at the aquarium. Like, uh, uh, oh, he just just a cool dude. We sat, we sat like, we, we picked him up from the airport, and he didn't have his PR person with him. He's just, you know, just, hey, guys, what's going on? Jumped in the back of the car, started talking racing as we went to the aquarium. It was great. What a what a dude! I, I root for him every week. Well, especially I, now that he races for the Wood Brothers. It is, it is definitely a, a an honor to have. I mean, it, James Clay. I mean, it was an honor to have him too. But this next guest, folks, mm-hmm. is one of the best road course racers in the world, and he's from Virginia. He. He's uh, hailing out of Ashton, Virginia right now. He is the driver of the number four mobile Sirius XM Chevrolet Corvette C8. Oh, my God. He is Tommy Milner. How you doing, Tommy? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good, man. Thanks for joining the Race in Virginia podcast. No problem. 
first of all, you probably have the coolest job in the world. I am pretty lucky. I'll definitely say that. There's uh, not, not many other jobs in this world, I think, that I'd rather have. I mean, you are on the team Corvette, team Chevrolet for the Corvette. And you've been with them since, uh, what, 2011, I believe it is. And first year with the team, you get uh, the win at uh, 24 Hours of Le Mans, as uh, I've been told by my uh, co-host, who is a French major. Something. <laughs> minor minor whatever you're a second generation racer your uh your dad is a a team owner and and your dad used to work for bmw and yep. you went to went to corvette talk about that transition a little bit yeah i mean so uh i mean first of all joining corvette racing uh was not the easiest decision uh of of my life at the moment because um as you said, my, my dad had a, had a history with BMW and, and, um, having driven for Robbie Ray Hall at that point for four years and two years with BMW when they had the program, um, you know, felt some loyalty to, uh, to Bobby and to, and to BMW. But, um, I think that, uh, the opportunity to, to drive for Corvette racing doesn't come around, uh, very often. That's for sure. And, um, you know, it took me took me about a day to kind of think about it and 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 look at it uh, with with just from from the right perspective in some way and what's good for my career and um, yeah, that was definitely the best decision I've ever made because as you said, I won won them all that that next year in 2011 with with the team and um, IMSA champion in 2012 and again in 16 and another Le Mans win in uh, in 16 so. Or fifteen, so uh, yeah, um, very very happy to uh, to have made that made that switch, and um, it was one that my dad actually uh, once we kind of just chatted about it a little bit, he he was pretty adamant that I that I uh, take the take the opportunity with Corvette Racing, and and that was uh, I would say the best advice that he's ever given me as well. <laughs> Were you surprised with that? Uh immediate success and the extended su- success so far of your career um as you know jumping in and winning Le Mans is not an easy feat yeah i mean this this so it, i mean i've basically raced in what what is now the gtlm class and at at one point it was gt2 and gt and all different names but basically a similar you know similar cars basically all the sort of the let's say the slowest gt class at Le Mans. um so having having raced in that class now for so many years and um, seeing how good a lot of the teams and drivers were and stuff like that, I mean, I didn't get my first my first win in IMSA until until 2012. Um, so part of me, you know, I wouldn't say I was second guessing myself, but um, you know, wondered when that win was ever going to happen. And um, getting it at Long Beach with uh, with Oliver in 2012 was was uh, was definitely a big step. I mean, obviously, Le Mans was a, a huge confidence boost to go to a team like Corvette Racing that has such a, a long history in sports car racing and so much success. Um, I knew that I had all the tools to, to get it done, and uh, sort of now is a little bit on me to, you know, uh, get that, get, make that last push, basically. So um, it's it's frustrating probably at first you know for 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 the guys that uh for some of the younger guys that kind of come into the class and and have had success else elsewhere and then trying to translate that into into this gto on class um it's definitely not easy but uh when it comes you know that you beat some of the best drivers and teams and engineers in the world so um yeah it, it can be frustrating at times i mean we i think both i think antonio went something like 200 and I don't know, it was, I think for us it was 240 days since we since we had won a race um, not until Sebring this year but um, for, for for a bunch of us on the team you know we sort of had a little bit of a, a winless spell there but um, have sort of corrected it this year and it can be frustrating for sure but um, again like I said you know that you're racing against some of the best best uh, best people in the in the world your co-driver with Oliver Gavin you mentioned Oliver you are one of the youngest co-driver teams in road racing talk about that because you guys have been together for quite a while what uh, at least 10 years or something yeah. like that right yeah 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 I mean well I mean Oliver's been 
so my, my first year I drove with, um, Olivier Beretta and, uh, and then, then the next year I switched, uh, switched to Oliver. And I mean, Oliver has been an absolutely uh, the perfect teammate. Um, he is undoubtedly fast. Um, obviously a lot of history with Corvette racing, but a lot of, a lot of success with Corvette racing. Um, he was an F1 test driver for Renault for, for a number of years. And so his, his, uh, his results and his, his pedigree speaks for itself. And to have someone like that, to, uh, uh, kind of help, help guide you a little bit, um, early on there, especially with, again, with a team like Corvette racing, where everything is, is, uh, sort of sorted and figured out, um, to have someone, have a, someone like Ollie who can, you know, you can kind of rely on for, some driving help in some ways, but then also just sort of on the personal level, um, having him, uh, as my teammate that first year to kind of, you know, at times when, you know, things were not going perfectly. Um, you know, he was a a great guy to have, um, around to kind of, you know, kind of get me, get me, get me focused again on the, in the right direction. And then as things were that, that year in 2012, my first year driving with him, um, when we won the championship, um, just having him, you know, as the races were counting down and we were, you know, getting closer and closer, just having him just as that sort of that reassuring, uh, teammate to kind of rely on a little bit, to just kind of help with the, the mental aspect of it as well. So he's been an absolutely fantastic teammate and I couldn't think of, of, of anybody better than him, you know, to kind of go through this, uh, the ups and downs that we've had for sure. Um, just, uh, just, just an awesome guy and a super, super fast race car driver. The new uh, Corvette C8R is on a three race win streak. My question to you is, I mean, changing from the the C7 to the C8, you going from the engine in the front of the car to the mid engine car. Yep. What's been the challenge this year? Has it has that been? Uh, I mean, uh, obviously, you probably I know you guys got to test the car a lot earlier than anybody <laughs> else, but um, has has that uh, kind of slowed some of the progress and and why now all of a sudden you guys are just killing it yeah i mean the the sort of the development of this car is kind of interesting in some ways um obviously it's a whole new uh platform for for the production car excuse me and um and then obviously the, the race car as well so i mean pratt and miller the engineering company that is sort of the the name behind corvette racing um they have a history of of building race cars for, for many, many years. And obviously, um, it's been the, been the, been the team behind, behind the name Corvette racing for a long time and building GTP cars to, uh, the, some of the DP cars, things like that. They, they have a, a wide range of knowledge of, of building race cars, but, but the C8, I think the first time that we actually really drove the car, uh, was almost three years ago or, or three plus years ago. But, when we drove it for the first time, it was actually just in a, in a simulator and not, uh, not a physical and not in any kind of physical form. So, um, sort of, I'm sure it's not the first race car, but certainly it's what, probably one of the earliest, I would say GT cars, um, that's probably been developed in that, in that way where a lot of the car was, um, sort of sussed out on the simulator beforehand to kind of give, some of the chassis guys and the aero guys sort of a direction in some ways of some of the options that we tried in the simulator. And then, uh, so that led to our first on track test, you know, the car ultimately, it wasn't perfect by any means, but it was in a really good place to start with. Um, and that's really accelerated the development process and, and ultimately sort of the, the winning, <laughs> the winning process of the car. Um, so, you know, obviously we had the five month break there with, uh, with the COVID stuff and, and, um, you know, there's a lot of hard work from the engineers and the crew guys when they were able to get back to work again. And, um, once they were allowed back in the shop there, just, uh, taking, taking the lessons learned from Daytona from the first race of the year where before all the, before COVID. And then we had one, uh, one two day test at Sebring not long after that. So we took all those lessons that we learned from the race and the testing and, and tried to kind of, you know, come out swinging here for the, our first race back, back at Daytona again for the sprint race. And, um, yeah, now we're on a three race, three race win streak and two one twos and 
going for uh, going for four here at VIR this weekend. I mean, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected everybody in different ways. VIR will, will not have fans this weekend. Uh, how how have you transitioned and, and handled the COVID-19 pandemic and the racing uh, portion of it? And also, how difficult it is, is it to go to the races and not be surrounded by 20,000, 30,000 fans? Yeah, I mean, it's for sure it's weird going to the racetrack without the fans there. And um, VIR always has such great fans. And, um, you know, missing, missing that aspect of it is definitely uh, not fun, that's for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, not to say that we're sort of used to it now. I mean, we had a couple of fans at Daytona and the, and the grandstands there and same at Sebring. So there's been, been some people. And then at, at Road America, there were, again, a sort of a, I would say more fans than, than we had the first two. So we're, we have some fan interaction at some of the racetracks, some of the places that are, that are allowing it. And unfortunately we won't have them at VIR, which is kind of a bummer for me, obviously being from Virginia and, um, it's always typically a race where friends and, you know, family can kind of make it to that one. So, um, definitely unfortunate, but, um, it's, it's been, I think it's probably the longest I've, I've been since I started driving race cars when I was probably 14, 15 years old, really, that I've been, been out of, out of race cars that long. So a lot of simulator stuff at my, at my home here, just playing stuff like I racing and, and those kinds of games just to kind of keep my head in the game. But then, you know, also the the team has a has a sort of a professional simulator in Charlotte that uh, that we were able to use again not long after uh, we got back going again. So, um, I guess the good thing is, you know, for for most of us at, at the at the team at Corvette Racing, we've we've been doing this quite a while and racing these cars for quite a while. So it was definitely just kind of like uh, just getting back. It didn't take very long to kind of get used to driving the race car again and certainly uh exciting to get to get back in the the real thing again and get out of the get out of the basement where i where i've got my simulator so (laughs) it's uh yeah it's it's definitely different but um you know the the more races that 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 we get going back get going racing again and kind of you know falling back into the 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 old habits and um obviously right at the moment right now the the habits are are uh, paying off pretty good yeah you've uh you've raced all over the world but what is it like to have a uh, one of the uh, Crown Jewel Road uh, Road Racing facilities um, in the state of Virginia, and 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 that be your hometown track at VIR? Yeah, I mean, feel feel very lucky for sure for you know one of the best sports car ra- sports car tracks in the world. You know, to be uh, only sort of four four and a half hours away from me. Um, I've had some a lot of some of my bi- biggest sort of moments in racing have come at that at that at that track. I got my first first professional pole at VIR, my first year racing racing sports cars. I won my first championship, clinched it at VIR in 2012. Um, so lots of good memories there, and um, it's often pl- a place again where I see a lot of my friends and family get get to kind of see me race, you know, race at that racetrack. So. Um, just feel very lucky. I mean, just for that racetrack, it reminds me in some ways of, um, of the Nürburgring in some, in some fashion, because I always say that the, the old Norse life there, um, but that track is amazing to drive by yourself. And when you add in, you know, add in, uh, 12, 14, you know, 20 other cars to race around. It's, it's incredible. And BIR has kind of that same, same feeling where, you know, just driving by yourself is, is special, but you know, the uphill S is turn 10. That whole sequence there is, is incredible in these GT cars now. And then when you, when you add in a couple, couple Porsches and BMWs and Ferraris, things like that, racing around, around them at the same time and trying to make, make passes happen. It's just that much better. Yeah, Dave's over here salivating, thinking of all of those, uh, all of those cars on the track at once. Um, I want to know. Uh, you, you say you've been uh, been in your basement doing a lot of eye racing. Um, tell the folks, um, you know, obviously who don't get to race there in in real life, who might be able to do it on the sim. What is the virtual VIR like um, as compared to the real one? Is it similar, or are there a lot of differences in the feel? It is as realistic and as real life as you can possibly get. So um, all the tracks in eye racing are laser scanned. Um, it's the case for some other games as well. You know, it becomes more common now, but iRacing prides itself on all their tracks being laser scanned. So every bump, every curve, every single detail about 
the track in real life is there in the game. So um, people always ask, you know, how, how, how realistic are these simulators and how much help are they? And the biggest help that they can give anybody, whether it's someone like me who's been racing for, I don't even know how many years now, 15 years, something like that. Um, you know, if, if I've ever not been to a racetrack before or haven't been to a racetrack in a long time, if it's in, if it's in iRacing, it's the, it's the most helpful aspect of that is to be able to drive the, drive the racetracks. Um, you know, and, and these days you can, they, they offer cars that are similar to, um, you know, a car that, you know, whether you're an amateur, they've got, you know, they've got, uh, the MX five cars, they've got Skippy cars. They've got all kinds of different stuff, sort of every, every range of car that you, that might sort of suit whatever car you're driving. Um, and that's ultimately sort of the biggest help for, for, for those simulators. And so just, you know, just kind of getting my brain kind of wrapped around again, sort of what the flow of the racetrack is, break points, references, things like that. Um, that's where these, these games are, these simulators are super, super helpful. Um, you brought up the, uh, you know, tracks that you might not have ever been to before. Um, that was the case, obviously, with the NASCAR series this uh, past weekend at the Daytona Road Course. Um, your team Chevy teammate, Chase Elliott, uh, put a whooping on him um, there. Yep. And that had, I'm going to assume, a lot to do with his time in the sim. Um, he uh, he enlisted the help of uh, Jordan Taylor, and I think Boris said, um, did you uh, um, did you have anything, I'm going to say have anything to do with that, but were you aware of how much time that these Chevy guys were taken and, and how they took on the course uh, virtually before they did it in real life yeah so uh i just came back from the simulator actually and, and so uh jordan and i had done done two days there and so he was there the two days previous of our test um helping all the all the hendrick guys and so when uh he's, he's obviously uh buddies in some ways with uh with jeff gordon so they uh they uh they called him in to, to kind of come a little early and help help all the hendrick guys um just just give them, I mean, all these guys, obviously all four of them are super, super talented and, um, all pretty darn good on road courses as, uh, as Chase, Chase showed there. But, um, it's obviously, it's obviously good for, you know, to have somebody that's driven the racetrack can kind of give you some tips, um, on some certain line things. And I know that they tested some rain stuff as well in the simulator. So, um, certainly having, you know, having Jordan's input, you know, obviously with all of his experience at, 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 at that road course, um, just, just, just to give them sort of a different perspective on, on, on some things and kind of give them an idea of what's worked in the past for different kind of cars that he's races that race there. So, um, you know, while we don't interface with, with the NASCAR guys that often, um, you know, there's, there's definitely, you know, team Chevy is definitely a team and, um, you know, when, when those guys have success, it's, it's good for us. And, you know, when, when we have success, it's good for them. So, um, you know, definitely, uh, always root, rooting those guys on and, and certainly, uh, paid a little extra attention to the race and, and, uh, you know, Jordan, it was fun, just fun kind of chatting with Jordan for our two days testing, um, you know, how, how, how their test went with the, with, uh, with those guys. And, you know, he obviously said, kind of echo what I said there that they're obviously they know they know the cars really well and, and the track and the tracks in general kind of what it takes to go fast in those cars so it didn't take them long to, to, to get up to speed are you surprised and impressed with how um, quickly Chase Elliott has progressed as a road course racer because he went from you know an oval driver to now perhaps the best road racer in the in the full-time cup series yeah, I mean, obviously he's got a lot of talent. Um, I I hope I'm not speaking out of turn here a little bit, but Jordan had said that Chase was a little bit lost to start with um, on the simulator, but again, it didn't take him long to to figure out, you know, how to how to get it going. So, and obviously, as we saw uh, yesterday, he's he's has you know tons and tons of experience, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of talent, and uh, knows how to make those race cars go fast. Doesn't matter if it's on an oval or on or on a road course. So. Um, that's fun. It's fun to, you know, to be around guys like that to, um, you know, to see how they operate sometimes and see, kind of see what makes them tick and, and figure out, uh, if there's something you can kind of learn from those guys in some way. 
Now, now Tommy, <clears throat> I just want to let you know, you, you geeked out Brandon because he, he is a sim uh, iRacing guy. In fact, he's in charge of Richmond Raceway's uh, eSports uh, team, league, whatever, you know, okay. th that they do here. So you talking about iRacing, man, he lit up. Or like, for me, <laughs> like for me, I geek out on the cars. Corvette uh -huh. has always been, I guess, the, the one car in my life, and I'm 58 years old, that kind of has, you know, has me starstruck. For, for you, being a, uh, a member of Team Chevrolet, driving the iconic Corvettes, is there any pressure to produce in those cars? No, I mean, there's, there's pressure in, in the sense that, um, I, I, yeah, this, this team has such a long history of, of success in the U S here. And, um, I mean, you see it and you see it, you see why, you see why they, they have the success, you know, going up to the shop there in, in Michigan and seeing the, the attention to detail and, and the amount of work that goes into making these cars, you know, just making them, but then making them fast. Um, so there's pressure in that sense. You know, this is obviously a team, in many ways, a team sport. While the drivers get a lot of the attention sometimes, there's a lot of people that that uh, that make it happen. And uh, so there's pressure in that sense to, to do do well for those guys. But there is a little bit of it for me. I mean, I was, you know, American kid, born in Washington, D.C., driving America's supercar, basically, um, to, uh, you know, and, for, and up until this year, I was the only full-time American. So... Now I can uh, pawn off some of the responsibility on Jordan as well, but uh, you know, yeah, for sure, it's uh, it's a, it's 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 an honor for me to be a part of this team, um, and uh, and to do it in a Corvette is uh, just makes it that much better. I mean, we were talking earlier uh, about you know, in in Formula One, the manufacturers are really promoted. Probably, I mean, I know that in NASCAR, Chevrolet, Ford, you know, they're promoted, but man, people live for the Ferrari, the McL McL McLarens. And, you know, is that this is that the same way with the road course uh, fan base? Yeah, I mean, the, the the Corvette fans are, I would probably sort of put them up there with the Tifosi for Ferrari. I mean, they are they are diehard fans. They they know their cars better than probably the the engineers that design them. They know you know, everything about the race cars, the, the, the Corvette racing fans are, are incredible. Honestly. Um, they're always, you know, if you go, if, if you, if you've been to one of our races, you see our autograph line is always the longest. It usually it overlaps with other teams and it's almost like they, they, they can't even get any people in front of them because the Corvette line so long. So it was one of the things that uh, Doug Feehan, our, our program manager, said to me when I first joined the team is when he called me up, he, I think the first question he asked me was, are you ready to be a rock star? <laughs> and I kind of, I said, ah, I said, I'm not sure. I was like, I, I think so. And, he's, and he said, you don't know what I mean right now, but, but you will soon enough. And, and uh, there was, there was definitely a race there on that first year where he kind of looked at me and he said, you know, something like, now do you understand when, you know what I meant? And I said, "Yep, I I fully get it now." And and uh, which is which is awesome, you know. It's for us as a driver, you know, we uh, you know we we want to win for ourselves and for our team. But um, you know, when you when you add in fans that are as as enthusiastic as they are, um, that gives you definitely just that little bit more. You know, if you driving a race car at you know two in the morning and you know, racing, racing somebody else. And, you know, there's, you're looking for anything possible to kind of dig deep to, to pass somebody or, uh, you know, if the car's hot, if something's not going right, to just that, if anything you, that you can pull from to, to kind of give you that extra motivation helps. And, and certainly having, having the fans that we do makes it, makes it that much easier. You know, road racing is much different than circle track racing. You, you know, in circle track racing, if you get a second driver, it's because something happened to the first driver. Uh, yeah. for, for you guys, when you're out on the track and you are in your zone and you're killing it, how difficult is it to pull in the pits and say, okay, here, the car's yours now? Um, so for me, I mean, that's really all I've ever done. I, I, I only did one year of, of formula car racing where it's just, just me driving, but most of my, my career and almost all my career has been sports car racing and sharing the car with other guys. And, um, 
when you have good teammates like I've had, I've been very lucky over the years to have some of the best sports car drivers in the world for sure. Bill Alderlin, Boris said, Hans Stuck, um, you know, some of those guys early on in my in my uh, career to have them to kind of look up to even when I wasn't even racing yet and see how, how they kind of operate. Um, and now with, with Oliver as my teammate, um, I've been very lucky in that sense that I know when I turn that, when I hand the card over to somebody else, that that guy's, you know, one of the best in the business and is uh, everyone has their bad days. That's for sure. I certainly have. And, and it's just part of part of sports car racing. Uh, but you, you know, it's, uh, in some ways it's more fun because on a day when you're not having, having the best day, you know, it's, it seems like that your teammate kind of picks up the, picks up the, the leftovers basically. And some days when, you know, when my teammates haven't, haven't been having a good day and, and I'm just, I'm again, it's, I don't know if it's more motivation to, to try to do well. Um, I've always been, I always felt like on, on my down days, my teammates kind of, kind of help. So, and, and, I, and I try to try to do the same for, for them when, when they're not having a great day. So, um, Growing up playing playing team sports like I did, lacrosse, basketball, stuff like that, I've always grown up around playing team sports. So it's just been sort of a natural extension for me to, to kind of continue that here in sports car racing. Uh, fast forward to, um, to this uh, this upcoming weekend at VIR. Uh, for anybody tuning in um, to watch the races this weekend, um, tell them what they can expect. What, what should they look for um, when they're watching the race uh, this weekend? Yeah, so so VIR, it's uh, uh, for this one, it's just GT cars. So for us, it's a lot of fun. We get to get to go for the overall pole and the overall overall win, which you know, small for us winning our class, whether it's whether we're the fastest class or the slowest class, it's all, it's all the same. But it is kind of fun to be the to be the fastest class and um, not always have to worry about those those uh, thirty side drivers dive bombing and stuff like that. So um, just just our GT cars, which is you know, I think oftentimes we think that, you know, we, that the TV kind of misses some, some good racing. And I see it in the, in the GTD class all the time. Those guys are having awesome racing. So it's fun to, fun to have the, the, the attention on us. Um, so, the, so our race is on Saturday. Uh, it's, uh, it starts at two o'clock on the East, on the East coast here. So it's still 440. Um, I think you, you, you can watch it on, I'm pretty sure it's on TV. It might be tape delayed, but you can see it see it online as well on the NBC Sports app. Um, there's also racing on Sunday that that, that uh, probably isn't live, but you'll be able to see it later on as well. Some of the the, the um, Michelin uh, uh, sort of said challenge uh, races on Sunday, and the and the uh, ST cars, whatever, also racing there too. So lots of uh, GT racing action. Um, always been some really good racing at VIR. Um, it's tough to pass in places, but, um, you know, if you have a fast car and you can kind of set somebody up, it's one of those, one of those places where the, the, the battle builds over a couple laps and then there's, there's a real fight for, 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 for sort of for half a lap to kind of make the, make the pass stick. So, um, definitely not easy. It's one of the, it's a tough, tough racetrack, but a lot of fun. And uh, looking forward to uh, to getting there and driving this this new Corvette C8 on the racetrack there. And we've done some testing there, and it's felt really really good in testing. So we'll see uh, we'll see how good it is this this, uh, this weekend racing uh, racing against those Porsches and BMWs and going for four wins in a row. You know, I I just noticed looking at the uh, at the the C8R that you drive. There's a little small number four and then ahead of it looks like a little digital panel it for the fans out there i guess that's for me in my head that's where you're running in the gtl M- M division correct that's correct yep and so uh so all of the all of the gtlm cars have red um red mirrors and red wing end plates to separate us from the gtd class which have green um, and so there's the associated, that panel that, that you're talking about there, it's an LED panel that tells the people watching at the racetrack, which unfortunately not this weekend, but on TV as well. Um, that'll be, that'll have our position in class on there. And the same goes for the GTD class. So our, our number panels then are red and GTD are green. So just that kind of helps separate a little bit. Um, I know for, for a lot of my friends who aren't uh, aren't big car guys, it, it takes them probably about a race or two to kind of understand what's happening. And you know, there'll be 
what looks like the same class of car racing at the same time, but, um, you know, but, but some differences there. So, um, sports car racing is, is a little bit more complicated at the start, but once you, once you watch a couple and understand what's happening, um, you know, I always, always have, again, friends, friends and, uh, and people that I meet that are sort of new to sports car racing. They're always excited about what sport, sports car racing has to offer where the cars you're watching, watching racing are basically, you know, uh, brothers and sisters of the, of the, of the production car. So, uh, definitely cool to, to, to see that, see the heritage and, and, and see where the cars start life. You know, you can drive that car to the racetrack and then watch the most badass version of it on the racetrack that day. You know, being a two-time Le Mans uh, winner, how difficult is it uh, um, not to be able to go do that because of the COVID? Yeah, this this year is definitely a bummer. Um, would have been, uh, I think, with basically Corvette hasn't missed missed a race at Le Mans since I think is ninety nine. Um, so that's uh, you know, it's it's always it's always a, a an honor to to be able to be invited to go race at Le Mans there, and for the for Corvette Racing to have done that for. 21 this would have been i guess 20 i think 21 years in a row basically that, that, we, that we would have raced there so that was a tough tough decision for for everybody at chevrolet um mark royce is sort of basically the president <laughs> the president of the company he's a big car guy um you know i know he, he that was a bummer for him jim campbell all the all the all the big brass at gm they were uh, it's not not a decision that they took lightly obviously but something that uh was unfortunately necessary this year so hopefully we uh you know get to go back get to go back next year we definitely have a really good race car i think with the c8r for, for that for that race um we've had great cars in the past i think this one's the best yet um so hopefully that opportunity comes again um but uh still i mean it's it's a lot of fun racing this car here in the u.s a lot of really really good racetracks here all the all the European guys that come over from 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 there and and race on our racetracks, they're always they're just in love with all all the tracks that that we have to offer here in the U.S. Um, so still uh, still a lot of fun, super exciting to be to be racing here in the U.S. For us, it is uh, a pleasure to have you on and an honor. We are blessed here in the state of Virginia to have some of the most amazing and most talented drivers and tracks and series in, in the world visit with us. I mean, I don't know of, of many states that can, can, that can claim they have two NASCAR tracks. They have one of the, the f- finest road courses in the, probably the world. And, yep. and also having, you know, one of the best drag, drag strips <laughs> in the country uh, and, <laughs> and the, sh- the amount of short tracks we have here. We are so blessed. And yep. Uh, I now have uh, someone I can pull for because I had no I Tommy I'm sorry but I had no I'm I've been around racing here in the state of Virginia for a long time I had no idea you were from Virginia. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's again it's I mean I'm not super active on social media and stuff like that I probably should be sometimes but um, I'm very uh, I love Virginia. There's no place I'd I'd, I'd rather live. I live. I live in around Hill, Virginia now, from close close to the mountain there. I'm not very far from the side of Virginia, but it feels like it should be some point, which is not far from not far from me here. So, um, lots of uh, you know, lots of car people in, in the area here, which is which is all which is all, always cool. And you know, again, like like you said, to have some of the some two NASCAR tracks, a great a great drag strip, one of the best sports car facilities in the world, with some of the best people running it. Um, definitely feel feel lucky to, to to live here well anytime you want to invite us to go for a ride in a corvette with you we are up we are <laughs> yeah. up for the challenge <laughs> well you, you, you'll have to get in line behind my wife because she tells <laughs> me I've been, with, I've been with her now almost six years <laughs> and uh i'm actually going to be a father here in about a week oh congratulations um, thank you um we she still has never ridden in a race car with me, and she tells me just about every day that that hasn't happened yet. So <laughs> once 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 I've I've solved that problem, then I'll I'll give you guys a call. Okay, uh, well, we appreciate yeah. being uh, second and third in line for that. Uh, being this your, <laughs> being this your first child, um, do you yeah. know whether it's a boy or girl yet? We don't. It's gonna be a surprise. Oh, awesome. I like that. You know, because everybody does those reveal things on 
social yep. media. So it's it's kind of cool. Uh, congratulations on have, uh, getting ready to for your wife to birth your first child. I was yeah. going to say for you having your for, you didn't have it. You, no. just, you just participated. She, she's doing all the work. That's <laughs> yeah. for sure. But uh, uh, thank you so much for taking. We probably kept you a lot longer than we should have, and we can't no thank you enough for taking the time to visit with us. And man, good luck this weekend and. Uh, hopefully it'll be uh, uh, at, at minimum a podium. That, that sounds good to me. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. All right. Folks, he is Tommy Milner. Uh, of course, he is Team Chevrolet, Team Corvette. Man, I'm telling you what, that, that is just a phenomenal, phenomenal job. I mean, if you're going to be a sports car racer, mm-hmm. to be in the iconic Corvettes, I mean, let, let's be honest, I mean, for – for road racing, Corvette has a really long history. Oh, absolutely. And uh, of dominating in a lot of a lot of cases. Mm-hmm. You know, with and I think the new C8 is kind of a uh, going a little bit more in the Ferrari kind of realm with a right. mi- mid-engine. I mm-hmm. think that's and if you look at it, it almost looks like a you know it looks. I mean, it's badass. I've, <laughs> I love how geeked out I'm you, telling you, you get over, you, I'm t- over I, I love, God, I love Corvettes. Well, if, if there was one car in that I could afford, oh. and I put afford, <laughs> it would be a Corvette. I, and I wouldn't care. It could be a 1958. Yeah. It could be, a, you know, a, a 2020. I, I really don't care. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, maybe, maybe here in the next few months, after Tommy's wife gets her, her yeah. drive in the Corvette, you'll you'll get your. I ride. doubt we will. Well, but here, I mean, I wish. Here's, here's the thing: yeah. if if that so happens, you'll be even more hooked oh. into that, and you'll probably want to spend all of your money to to get one. No. after that, my no, wife won't let me. Won't let you. <laughs> it's a no go. Well, I don't know. My wife might she. She yeah. likes sports cars. That, maybe and if we can afford it, she'd like it because yeah. she'd look good in one. Yeah, there. You, per, see, th- those are the types of things that you have to keep saying over <laughs> positive reinforcement. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, again, we we talk about it every week. Yeah, we talk to some amazing. We've been able here this year to talk to some amazing drivers. Absolutely, it is unbelievable the amount of talent. We have in the state and you know i've always known virginia was had a lot of, mm-hmm. r- of of racing talent i don't think i really realized it until this year what kind of talent we do have mm-hmm. whether it be drag racing whether it be which by the way i did i dipped my toe in the water man i we're gonna have us a drag racer on I don't. I don't mean. Well, I'm well mean. Yeah. Here on the uh, by the way, uh, we will have um, the folks from uh, the Virginia Tourism on next week, and I th- I'm pretty sure that I'll have the promoter for Richmond Dragway on uh, because th- they've done a little bit different. They didn't. They're not racing. Mm-hmm. They decided not to race this year, as as in VMP decided to race. So I want to hear his. And, I kind of kicked myself in the in the in the butt right, you know, when I was sitting down and and looking at the schedule and trying to figure out who we wanted to have on, uh, and I went, oh my God, we haven't had Richmond Dragway on. Well, now we will. We will, uh, and we got some other. We're working on some other stuff. I I, I am still. I already sent. By the way, I sent out some emails for Junior. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna get Junior. You you. You challenged me. And that's uh-huh. that, that yeah. I am getting junior. I'm sorry. Oh. I can't I can't wait to for for him to tell some uh, some stories about Virginia cuz yeah. I mean I think I personally think that Dale Jr currently is the best storyteller in the NASCAR realm. Nobody does it better than him. Um, other than other than our podcast, theirs is theirs, theirs yes, is the next the Dale Junior download. It, theirs is the next after best. that one. Yeah, <laughs> but, but in, in terms of telling stories, I could listen yeah. to Junior tell tell racing stories all day. Long. The, the thing about Junior, and I know we're going to close this up, but the thing about Junior is that he is a he is a student yeah. of history. He loves history, mm-hmm. and uh, you know their Lost Speedways program on Peacock. Yep is phenomenal 
uh, talking about tracks that have gone by the wayside. And by the way, folks, this is why we do this show, because we need to make sure that we have you guys attending short track racing as well as the, the major events here in the sure. state. We need to keep, because if you don't have a short track system, you have no... There's nothing to feed no. the big series. Yeah, you you got to be able to feed the beast. Yeah. And if you have no short tracks, you can't feed the beast. So we, we have to make sure that, that we get out there and we support, especially in this very difficult time of COVID-19. I mean, the stress that is being put on short track race tracks right now is, and major sure. facilities, is unbelievable. You know, you're you're worried that, are we going to stay in business? Are we going to be able to, you know, stay in business, especially the short tracks? The, yep. You know, uh, Richmond Raceway and the rest of that, you know, they have TV money and, you know, and but it is it is a financial burden mm-hmm. on, the you know, the, the big tracks as yep. well. But... And you got to think long term as well. I mean, like you have to you have to make sure that the the fans are taken care of long yeah. long term, so they keep you know, keep returning once right. we do get to a place of normalcy, yeah. whatever that might be. Uh, and I, oh God, I hope that's soon. Yeah. <laughs> God, I hope that's soon, uh, folks. A, a lot of racing coming up this weekend. You yep. can go to uh, racingvirginia.com uh, backslash schedule. Mm-hmm. And remember, we got the the cars tour at Franklin County. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Yeah, and we got the cars tour at Franklin County. We got uh, Langley's racing, Dominion's racing, Winchester's racing. Uh, And VIRs on TV. uh, We we don't talk about them a lot, but Ararat. Yeah. uh, Thunder Raceway. uh, I I put out a little feeler for them as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a a new track for me in my head. Uh, Dirt track is beautiful. Oh Lord, they have some really nice orange clay. <laughs> if I could, if, if if we could afford it at Virginia Motor Speedway to send some uh, rail cars that way, and get you know like I don't know, we need about five hundred loads or somewhere around that. God, uh, that stuff's got to be like gumbo walking on. Take your shoes <laughs> off of you. God. <laughs> it's beautiful. I've God, it's never, beautiful. I've never thought of it that way. It's ever. God, it's beautiful. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, that's why we do this show. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to throw something out there. You're the social media guy. I am. I want our, our fans out there that listen to that are on, uh, Twitter. Hopefully you are. Okay. Uh, tweet us a question and use the hashtag ask RVP. I've got to, I've got to see if that's used already. But it probably is. Oh, that's right. Probably yeah. isn't. Yeah, you, you never. I forgot I've, to check. I have come across some things you would never think of. Yeah. And then you search it, and you're like, "Oh, good God, we can't use this." Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, but I'm. Or, or I mean, if we don't have that, we can always do hashtag. Here, I'm gonna look it up right now. Ha- a, 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 you know, we got one. It, it is. Uh, is it used? Uh, it's kind of weird. Um. We could probably use a camera. It's uh, something, uh, something with uh, international soccer. It's being oh. used. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. We'll fi- we'll figure out a hashtag. How about that? Oh, well, we could say Ask RV. Ask Ask RV. <laughs> Bet you that you that's used by like Camping World or something. Yeah. Or Ask RV Pod. No, that's not that's uh, that's not being used. Ask, ask RV. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Ask RV Podcast. There okay, you go. That's what you use? That's not being used. Okay. Uh, use the hashtag Ask RV. RV Podcast. Okay. And we'll be able to see it. And we'll be able to see it. And uh, this is kind of how we'll uh, pick our next Racing Virginia fanatic. Hey. Okay. Interact with us on social media. Yeah, interact with us on social You'll media. Be on the podcast. Uh, if, you've, if you've got a question you'd like us to answer, uh, or it, even that. Uh, Tweet uh, a driver you want us to mm-hmm. to interview. I mean, that's what this is all about. I mean, this there could is, be some drivers that we've just over. This ain't our and, show. Yeah, this ain't our show. This is your show out there. Okay, you you be the. In fact, I would love for you to be the program director out there. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't pay much, but no, <laughs> but it would be really nice. <laughs> Um, and thank you so much for supporting uh, our social media channels. We. Re- the, we're, we're getting a lot more folks that are following our, our Facebook page. Uh, make sure you don't forget about Twitter and uh, Instagram, Instagram well. right? 
at, at what, Brandon? You're this at Racing Virginia. Okay, at Racing Virginia, and uh, you know, again, we're we're going to have it on the the directories. It is. I found out this week. It's a little bit more difficult than I expected. Yeah. It, it, technology always is. I didn't. I didn't feel. I didn't think I had to go to every directory and sign up an account. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep, I, I learned. I learned that this week when I was doing my research too. By the way, this uh, this past week's podcast ranks up there in one of the uh, one of the top ones um, since we've been since we've been back in one of those all time. So it's getting it's getting better, and we're going to make it easier for you guys to listen. That is the that is the thing why we want to put it on the directories is we want to make it as easy for you as as we can to listen to to our um, to our show this show your show, and uh, again we can't thank you enough for vis- uh, listening to us, not visiting with us, but listening to us. If they and were visiting, I'd be scared right now. And, you know, for Brandon Brown, I'm Dave C. saying thank you and to remember to keep racing. Virginia.